Yu-Gi-Oh! is a trading card game. With so many decks to choose from, players have lots of choices. From structure decks to constructing your own decks, players try to take their deck to the top. With so many options, how do you decide? In this series, we shall be starting from three of the Fire King structure decks that give a powerful fire-based archetype that has lots of destruction capabilities. With a sole budget of $15 a week, we shall be showing players that it's possible to build a competitive deck to stand up at the top of the meta events. Follow me through this journey as we construct a deck to burn our way to victory, because this is Living Like Fire Games. As you guys can see, there's not very much this week. We're just getting a Garua, a Maximus, and an Omen. It comes out to 15 and one cent here. So we're just one cent over the budget. Um, but we see you guys in the deck profile. So for this week, all we simply cut out was you know, one Ecclesia here for our copy of Maximus. Now we have three search targets. Eventually we do want to cut out the uh, the Ecclesia and the Dogmatic Punishment, but we're not there just yet. So we're gonna be playing it for a while as well as it makes the Deer Servant still a little bit better. This is just for the combo lines of the Nadir. And then for our extra deck, we just have these seven cards now, doing a little bit better than we were before. You know, we do still have those kind of like sacky cards that aren't really good. We're going to be trying adding Prosperity in the next episode, though, which will also give us the opportunity to play, like, or not really care about these. But obviously, you know, this is for the combo line as well. You know, Titanic Classic is going to be like our extra flex spots. Seven two nice cards for our flex package with Dogmatic Punishment as well as Nadir Servant. It's pretty nice. We do not have access to the full combo, which is very nice. And we are now in the second part of the video, you know, after the minute. You guys don't want to see the deck profile, essentially. We already know what's going on. But we're going to be in the duel section now. We're going to be playing round one against Chelements here, a very powerful deck. Um, that honestly kind of like steamrolls this deck if they end up going first. You know, they have Shuffler back, so we'll shuffle back your stuff off the Kirin, um, as well as being able to set up those very powerful monsters or being able to put up a Dweller also really hurts. And lots of cards are really good against this. We're going to see them start off with a Planet. And we do Ash it with the Quickness. Um, they have the Rhino Heart regardless. This is just like an attempt to make sure that they don't have any other stuff. There's lots of stuff you can Ash. I really just don't feel bad about Ashing the Planet if that's the first thing they activate. And then we're going to see the Mill is going to be good. We do see a Siren as well as a Card Destruction being hit here. But like when they start off with a planet, if they already have like a Shiren in the hand, um, it's like kind of unfortunate. But like in this case, they would have been searching for the Shiren. They activate the Shiren, pitching the Rhino, summon itself out. Like it would have done so much for them. Um, we're going to see them go Tear Cash, banish to other Tear Cash, summon itself out. They're going to be banishing or putting some of the stuff here in the. Uh, they, oh, yeah, they're going to be searching for the Havness as well as the Trap. Um, we did not see the Sharon effect because of the fact that they already, uh, they just didn't have enough, essentially. I want to see the, uh, send a copy of Merly. Then we're going to be seeing Merly effect and activate there. Going for a Clado Heart. Um, and then that can activate its effects of the planet. Some itself out. Then we're going to activate the effect there to dump. And we're going to be dumping a copy of Scream, it looks like. That definitely cannot be the play. Choosing to dump another copy of Scream. And we're going to set one and pass. I don't even know why we did that. That just does not seem worth it to me. At least I can't see why we'd choose to do that. We're going to go with Sanctuary, put the Fire King Island onto the field there. If there's reasons why we wanted a second Scream and Grave, please let me know. Maybe they didn't want to be seeing it in the hand. Like, I suppose you're deck thinning your deck by one, but it just doesn't really seem... I guess past turn one it doesn't seem the greatest. We're going to be seeing us here search for the Garunix there, and then Garunix will be able to trigger himself out to summon and then destroy... And it looks like they have an Impulse in, or a Fire Attacker in the hand. I don't even know which one it is. I see a Rescue Ace card. Uh, they're going to be chaining the Havness to this. Um, we do have Ash Blossom in response. Keeping that in the hand there. Um, making it so they don't get to mill any more cards. That's also what I like about like when you're playing. Um, let me ask, can we read the 
Silic, so we know that that's what the card is set. Um, that's one thing I do like about when you're playing on a budget. Your opponent has no idea. Like I see these lo guys at locals every single week, right? These are some of my best friends that we hang out and we see each other. You know, we go for dinner before cards. Sometimes we we play ball afterward, or they play play ball. I don't play ball, um, but like there's there's a little group of friends at locals that do play consistency uh, consistently with each other. And you know, when I'm playing budget, these guys have no clue what I'm playing. Um, so like for example, he had no idea that I had I added Ash into the deck. Um, this week, and it's like well, every time you just end up being able to change a deck, they have no idea what you're playing. But like a lot of times, when they, they know you're playing, let's say Unchained, for example, when I was playing Unchained for like the past like couple months, um, a lot of players knew that uh, that's what I was playing. Um, therefore, they could like uh, adjust their strategy to this. But like you have no idea how to play around any of the cards um, that I, I put in my deck because half the time I'm looking at like random stuff that uh, you know I haven't even really like really thought about, or that's really good. Um, and it, like the dogmatic punishment that we saw in the last episode versus the um, versus Alex who was playing the adventure synchron deck, uh, you know, it'd be really nice. Now we're gonna search for the circle off the phonics, and then we destroy the Sulik, um, which can then search for a tear crash, which is very unfortunate for us because you know being able to mill multiple cards here is going to be uh, quite problematic. If they hit a shuffler as well, they will be able to uh, to like shuffle back their stuff to pop um, which popping a card is quite nice they're gonna go battle phase more attack into the kaleido um you know just making sure that they don't have like a way to um, spin it back or anything like that and our board's not that great um you know we do have the circle that can destroy the ponix to summon out the kieran but you know you don't always, always want to destroy some other stuff um, but we're going to be seeing us activate that, um, summoning out the Kirin there. And, like, you know, this will give us a level, we can go into a level 8 then that can destroy the board. You know, if they try to go for, like, a Guardian Chimera line or something like that, that, you know, can activate. It is kind of difficult, though, because they have, uh, like, a bunch of triggers. So, like, when do you want to actually summon out the monster that pops and they can, like, chain. We're going to just simply passing turn on this, hoping that... You know, that standby phase, add back Ponix, as well as, um, you know, going into that level 8 is going to be good. We're going to see them search for a Polymerization with King of the Swamp here. You know, making it so that they can go Garden Chimera whenever here. We're kind of forced to go, like, Guardian Chimera whenever, or we're kind of forced to go into it like, it's hard because I can't just activate Polly and we just chain because they have to actually summon the monster out. So, like, we could have done it here where they couldn't have chained Polymerization because we knew they have Havness in the hand. Um, but they do hit nothing. And, like, this is where we should have activated it to go into something there because they would have been able to activate on a new chain. You know, stopping a Send 2 is not going to be the greatest, but it is what it is. But we do know that they can't go for Guardian Chimera because I think it takes monsters with different names. So you are kind of safe because you know they only have the, uh... or no, they have another card in the hand as well. I didn't, even... I've completely forgot about that. So we're gonna see them activate polymerization here. But if they do destroy our copy of the Garunix X Y Z, we will be able to uh, summon back out two from the graveyard, which is very nice. Then we can destroy stuff with the uh, the Garunix from the deck. We can destroy like a Baron or another copy of Kirin, which can then summon back out and destroy a card. We're going to see them go for the copy of Guardian Chimera there, and then they can also activate the effect of Havness, and then we're going to be and the Tear Cash. Then we chain to go into the Garunix. Then we see a Mill of a Tribute Karma, as well as the King of the Swamp. So we're going to go for the Havness plus the Tear, or... Uh, the king of the, plus the yeah having this plus king of the swamp to go into a copy of the uh, Rukulos probably this card just absolutely bodies our board yeah like Rukulos is a problematic card we have to find a way to end up dealing with this so we're gonna be playing against tier because um, they can just destroy this and then we can try to activate the effect they just negate it with the Rukulos and we're essentially just uh, not able to continue here. 
I'm going to see them banish the Trivi Chimera to be able to search for another planet. Planet over planet can then search them for a copy of either Happiness or copy of Rhino Heart. They can normal summon up the Rhino Heart, activate the effect there, which can dump the copy of Shiren or a Merly. Merly can then fuse with itself plus a King of the Swamp to go for a copy of the Agrafa, and then they're just going to be able to pop. And that's going to be game for them. You know, having crazy cards. Like, even when Tail Limit first came out, I was not the biggest fan of it. I mean, I was a big fan of it before we got the Ishizu cards. Then the Ishizu cards made it, like, not really fair. I wish that they did ban those cards. Um, but it's kind of hard for Konami to probably justify, you know, banning essentially four cards out of, like, a five-card engine, I guess. Um, but they really should ban those cards. Those, man, those cards are disgusting. Um, and absolutely just not necessary for the game to uh, to continue. Like, they're all at one right now, which is already kind of sacky. But maybe they need to hit, like, another one. Maybe they need to hit Kalbeck and, like, one Shuffler and let them have one of each. Which then if they just mill the card, then they're just better, right? But going into game two here, like, there's different options we can play. We're not playing any really good traps, um... As well as, like, Punishment's not that good against them. And then there's, like, when you think about it, we also have, like, cards, like, uh, like, Nadir Servant's getting Maximus. Maximus isn't great against them, because they can go into, like, they have some spots in their extra deck they can just dump and then, like, be able to shuffle back with the Shufflers. Uh, or able to put back into the deck to be able to use, like, for Fusion Materials, which is kind of, like, kind of crazy, actually. Um, you know, you can dump a copy of, uh, King of, uh, not King of the Swamp. But Muddy to go for a copy of, like, uh, Garua, or not Garua, but the, uh, the Preta Plant. And then, like, if they want to, they can also dump a copy of Garua themselves to draw additional card. You can't go wrong there. Um, they're going to be seeing, looking at their extra deck to see what they're going to have to be sending. Um, because they do know how it's coming. We're searching for the Maximus by dumping the Garua. Then we get that additional draw off the Garua here. It's also nice getting the draw like prior to uh, to be able to do it because then like, if we draw into like a Ponix, um, we can then like kind of change up our lines a little bit. And our our to our two are chosen right away here, you know, going for the copy of the Titanic Lad as well as a copy of Shureg. So then go for a barricade blocker as well as the copy of the money. Now, money is not really useful as well as blocker. It's probably really bad. Um, and then we end up activating the effect of uh, Shurag to search for a copy of Ponix here, which we then can normal summon. They're going to chain the impulse here, and we're going to be hitting it with Cobble the Grave. Um, you know, the reason why we do that is because we don't want them to get a draw too. I know people are like, why would you ever hit a... Uh, that with the call of the grave. Like, why would you not hit a tier monster? Um, the reason why is because I don't want them to potentially draw two cards. Like this impulse is obviously important to them. You know, now they're on four cards in their hand. If we set up a board that we really care about, um, you know, I don't want them to start with two cards, and they are like bricky. Like this deck does brick quite a bit. Um, so, you know, by making them only have those five cards, they're going to be drawn for turn. Um, rather than like putting back a bunch, so we them choose their hand. I want them to just minimize the damage that they can do here. Which we're going to be going for the combo, you know, dumping out the Garunix, and then, or Garunix doing something himself out, dumping the Baron, which is going to be able to add us cards. And we do have a Droll in the hand as well, which we can use during a follow up turn. Um, you know, which, you know, you want them to have less cards for that for sure. Less cards to play with means more cards to troll. And they're reading, making sure that we can go into the XYZ there. And then we're going to go Titanic Lad here during the end phase, letting us search for a copy of the Maximus, or not Maximus, but the Fleur de Lis there. But because we control a Maximus that we can summon it out, um, which is going to be negating an extra deck monster, which is really nice. And then during the standby phase, we're going to go Phonics, add back, and then Barong going to be adding us any Fire King card. We're most likely going to be choosing the Kirin there because we do not have one in the hand. But going for an Arvada, so we do have the Kirin in the hand already here. 
So if we do like summon out Kieran, destroying it, we can then summon out the Baron. Um, and then there we can go for an XYZ, which is going to be destroying the Baron once again, which is quite nice. They're going to activate a King of the Swamp right away, searching for a Polymerization. And this is like the best, uh, the best case scenario for us. Gonna chain a Kieran to this. I'm, I'm not even sure why. Why would we chain Kieran to King of the Swamp? Destroying the Arvada to summon himself out. It's gonna search for a polymerization here. And we're gonna be chaining Droll on this. Why would you not destroy Ponix? Then we're going to see a Foolish Burial going to be activated here. You know, already having a crazy card in the hand to uh, to be able to send. They can send anything that they want at this point. Going to send in a Gita, which is going to make both of us mill five cards. We do see an Ash Imperm, but they look like they milled absolutely nothing here. Um, but they are definitely playing Thrust. We do see a copy of Card Destruction, the... Uh, planet, but we do hit a Rhino, which is going to be able to summon itself out, then dumping a Solik, but they're on the Droll, so they cannot even act with the effect of Solik there. And then we're going to be going Rhino effect to dump. And they have Polymerization, and then two or th two unknowns. We're going to go for Havness here. And then Havnus can put back itself in a copy of the King of the Swamp to go for a Rukulos or the, the Guardian there, or the Grapha Fusion. Going for the copy of the Rukulos. Then we're like, oh, well, you know, we could activate it, but then we get rid of our Maximus, then we don't have that negate. Um, it's kind of difficult because, you know, it's not like the easiest board to maneuver. Um, but we kind of want to negate the Rukulos whenever we want to. So we're going to chain link one Sanctuary, chain link two Fleur to summon itself out, negate the copy of the... Uh, Nah, that, that, that definitely is not the plan. I do not know why I'm doing that. <laughs> At all. Um, we're choosing not to negate it here, or not to destroy, which is just interesting. I guess then if we get destroyed, then we could summon out two monsters, but it does also make them like kind of threatened. Like They think that they're going to have to be negated it there. Um, but we're going to see them activate a tier cache. Banishing a summon, then we're gonna be milling two more cards or three cards. We're gonna screen or grief, and like it's hit also. A, uh, what am I saying? Hits another copy. We hit grief, another copy of the tear cash, and then another card. So we add back one of the cards from the graveyard there, then we hit two more useless cards. And then we see a Palmerization here. Going for Rukulos. A Rhino Heart, as well as the card in the hand, Medora. Going for a Guardian Chimera. But they can act with the effect because they are under Droll. Um, they get to summon back out the Rukulos there. So they wanted a big monster to beat over, I suppose. And then, you know, that will trigger the effect, but they can just negate uh, it with the Rukulos there to summon back out the two. Then Rukulos can attack into the Flare de Lis. Letting us be able to send two more cards with Maximus, though. I don't even know if that's even worth it. I mean, they haven't seen the Entus yet, so maybe, you know, if we end up, like, changing our extra deck to have more cards that we can send off Maximus there, it could be another possibility. Um, I don't really think I'd ever thought that Maximus would stay on the field, um, but that's fine.
we're in a normal summon mode in our Vada here. So now we have our Monster Negate, um, which is very nice. And that will also be able to trigger the copy of Garunix there whenever we really want to. Um, which can, like, can, can contest with the Rukulos. I don't know what that set is at all. Like, oh, on our field. I completely forget what it is. It's an idea servant here. What? We're going to send eight Entis here. Which can then add us back the copy of Flareleaf from the graveyard, which is very nice. And the monster is on the field. Um, then we're going to be seeing the effect of Entis going to be activating here. Attempting to destroy the copy of the Rukulos. And we know we do have the floor here, which can summon herself out. We're going to activate Fire King Island, destroying the copy of the Ponks, which can then summon out or search for a Kieran here, which is going to be then summoning out the copy of Garunix. And our opponent's going to scoop it up, knowing that there is too much going to be going on here. And they're going to be going on into game number three. We do have a bit of a problem by going second against this deck. You know, we are close to time, which is quite nice for us. If they don't have a way to end up, like, milling a card like Shatter Scott or... Um, whatever other ones that are playing now, you know, I think Scattershot's probably the most common one because being a level two and you're able to go for the copy of Sprint, which is just, you know, be able to send it without like having to rely on any like of those mills, um, that we see before with like the, uh, the skull mark ladybug or whatever it's called. Now that one you had to rely on the mills, but with like, with this, you have like a certain way of sending it precisely that way, um, which is quite nice. Um, but, you know, if we do end up getting a turn, we do have some powerful cards that are able to, like, blow apart boards really quickly. Or, you know, we are playing those copies of Kaijus as well as, um, the, uh, Alpha Mystical Beasts. So, you're gonna be able to just, like, bounce back some cards and then be able to attack. You know, we could just get lucky there and end up going for, uh, for, like, a quick copy of game here. Uh, but... Moving on into game three, we're going to be seeing the tier player going to be choosing who's going to go first or second here. And I cannot see a world where they make us go first. But there could be, you know, if they are siding on those going second cards, you know, Fire King does not set up a big board. So you could just absolutely make them go first, set up a board, or like let them set up their little one turn board. Um, and then, you know, just slowly break, like break it apart with whatever left is left on time. Um, and then, you know, being able to just do it. But we're going to start off with a planet. We're going to Ash that. You know, it has not let me down so far. You know, I want to always Ash, like, the first, if they don't have anything else. You know, stopping them from getting whatever they want. But they see a Scream. And then you open up Foolish Burial again, bro. This card, like, is this card at one? You know, he's able to send, like, a Guido. He's able to send so many cards that he wanted to with this. Um, but Foolish Burial is insane. Sending the Aguido here. It's going to make both of us mill five cards. We do see some people uh, looking around watching us there. And we see them mill a Kelbeck as well as Tribute Karma and a Shuffler and a Sulik. That's just crazy. We end up milling two Garunix as well as a Rang Bali. And I think that is a, also a copy of the Kieran there. And then we're going to be chaining the. No, you're chaining like Silic 1, Kelbeck 2, and then Tri Tribute Karma 3. Switching for another copy of the Trap card. Let me mill another 5 cards here. We do see a Droll, Arvada, Herald, and then an Imperm. They hit 3 Rhino Hearts. Um, I think that is a Rhoda as well as a copy of Scream. So we're going to be seeing the Rhino Heart going to be activated there. Not the best second mill 5, but it can summon then send the Trap they have in the hand there or the copy of tier cash and then we're gonna go planet one or tier cash is gonna be milling three as well as rhino and we do see the scatter shot there also getting the card destruction which does look super clean and super rare i love super rares a lot and then we're gonna be hitting the copy of the tier cash Gonna be setting two. They're gonna activate a talents there to draw two additional cards. Because we did activate the Ash Blossom. You know, they are just have to, like all they have to do left is combo now. And then I see the Greaves gonna be activating its effects. Summoning and probably dumping the same exact monster there. So they can end up shuffling or you know fusing here. 
but they haven't really hit any of those tier cards other than the Rhino Heart, which is kind of funny. Um, you know, you definitely want to be hitting like those those three fusion ones. You know, Merly, Havnus, as well as uh, as well as the Shiren. And actually, you like facilitate your plays here, um, but they are pretty low on cards, and we are getting very close to time here. Uh, which is quite problematic. You know, they did burn us with the scatter shot, um, which is going to be, you know, kind of unfortunate. They're going to summon a Rhino Heart, then send the other Rhino Heart. They're going to set one and just pass on this. I, I don't even know, like, that is such a bad board. We're going to Kaiju them right away so they cannot activate their trap card, and now they do not have anything else. We're going to be Kaijuing ourselves here, then activating a Fire King Island. Um, they can just shuffle back here to pop our Fire King Island. And therefore, it's going to be popping our Doggeran. But this will be triggering the Garunix in the graveyard here. I mean, you know, they definitely could have shuffled back one of those. They could have gone their two tier, one tier card, and then both of our Garunixes, which is then going to be, you know, triggering the Garunix. Um, so it's because, you know, it's not in the grave anymore. And they're going to be dumping a Kieran here. And then Kieran will be able to summon back out and popping. Yeah, I can't summon itself. We could summon out a Garunix, though. Or an Avatar. You know, we could summon out the Arvada and then pop the Kaiju here. And now we do have, like, the full ability to go for, uh, just go for the game. You know, we are super close to time. We do have the advantage there, you know, having... Um, an 18 and then like a 39 beater here. Um, so only have to deal a few more damage. And we have not normal summoned as well. So we're going to normal summon with the Ponix. And we have enough for this. This can go for the copy of Circle here. And that's going to be an OTK. So we're going to go for Circle. You know, we're at 27 plus 12 plus 18 plus... Five, and that means we can just be plus another 27. That's just going to be 89 here. So we can go battle phase. And if they have nothing, I mean, if they have a tier cash in the hand, that's going to be um, enough. But they would have activated that earlier. If we want to go battle phase, attack, attack, activate circle, summon out the copy of the Kieran, and then attack for game. We have taken game three here with a little bit of misplay, you know, not hitting those those shufflers there, or shuffling back our copy of Garunix, but jumping right on into game number, uh, this is a game number two, I guess. This is the finals. We end up skipping round two here. Uh, or no, we skipped round one, I believe. Um, but going on into the finals here, you know, only a three round locals. I don't think that really I should, you know, feature off all three matches. It would make it for a very long video. I already find this video going to be very long. It's like 50 minutes. Um, but we're going to be seeing a die roll here. We're playing against Sword Soul on the left. And obviously we're playing on the right here still with the Team Soul and Circus mat. Um, we're going to be seeing a normal summon of a Moe revealing the effect. Summoning out the token there. And then they can go for a copy of the Long Yong. Pitching another copy of the Vishuda. Summoning out the token. And then we're going to go for a copy of Baron. You know, playing around the Nibiru is quite nice, you know, on the fifth summon. We do take that 1,200. They're going to be going for a Chijou here. Then Chijou as well as Moi will be able to draw them and search them a card. They do have a Moi in the hand as well as it looks like an Imperm. Um, so then we'll be able to search for a Blackout. But uh, they know that blowing up our card is not very great. So they end up searching for a copy of... Emer like they're looking at blackout or emergence and they really don't want to be blowing up our cards here so they want to go for like the follow-up going for the emergence there um, because they do have the copy of mogi in the hand and like mogi plus emergence is essentially just an fdk or i guess not like an fdk but like it, it's very very good um, and like they have still the omni gate as well as a baron and i don't really think that they can we can otk with this this deck i mean you know, they are quite new to the game um and unfortunately they're actually leaving like michael's going to uh to go play professional league, which is really cool. Um, you know, big, big friend of mine. And we're going to see them activate the Baron to negate the Fire King Island. You know, being a very good card here. But we have the Deer Servant, which is going to then send the copy of Garunix, which means we can't, or not Garunix, but sending the copy of Garua there. And then we get the search. Um, 
And they don't know really, really know what these cards do at all. Uh, like, they have not really seen. They see the Garua effect. They know to draw. But they, they don't really know what we're cooking up here. Um, you know, they, they only spend... They've been playing, I think, Yu-Gi-Oh! for the past, like, four months. And it's just off and on here. So we're going to act with the effect of Maximus. Sending the two cards here. Um... And then it's going to be sending the Entis as well as the Shurag here. And like we're going second, that's why we send the Entis because we want to pop the stuff and we really want to make that Chi Zhao going to be going through. Now they didn't think that we were going to be actually sending the Chi, uh, sending the Entis here, um, so that's why that they didn't choose to negate with the copy of Mac uh, with the copy of Chi Zhao. Um, you know, a lot of times in the combo videos you don't see them send Entis at all because you know it is a useful card. Um, but we do have the phonics in the hand already there. We also have the sanctuary, which can then search us for whatever really we wanted to. Uh, so that's just kind of unfortunate for them. But, you know, you definitely want to save like the chi Zhao for the phonics because you want to be able to stop those spells and traps. We're going to see the Fire King Island being played on the field here. Um, like it's quite difficult like they could actually just chain that that was a blackout there now but there's no worms on their field to be able to do that um, which is kind of unfortunate but we do see a normal summon of a ponix they're going to chain the imperm to this we do have the kieran to stop that as well here which can then be able to destroy it to summon himself out let me just search for the spell and trap searching for most likely for a circle There we're going to be seeing the Runic's going to summon himself out because he saw a card on the field was destroyed. And then we're going to be able to dump here, going to be dumping a copy of, um, we could actually dump the, the Arvada if we wanted to. Um, so then we can like summon it back out once we like destroy the, and we can go like Fire King Island, destroy the copy of Kieran, and then Kieran can summon back out the Arvada. We're going to see Arvada effects when we summon back out the Ponks. Um, and then we're going to be seeing them attack with, or us attack over the Baron. And then we're going to attack with the Kieran. And then we're going to attack with the Phonix here. And then we can go uh, the Circle here, destroying the copy of the Kieran. And then summoning out the Arvada, attacking for 18. Unfortunately, Kieran does not have any targets in the graveyard for us, which is just very unfortunate. That would have been able to be a game. And we should have also put the Maximus in attack position to be able to attack with it. Uh, but I don't really know what I was thinking there. You know, it's just normally you put it in defense position. I didn't think I was going to get that far. Um, but we left them at like 200 life points or something like that. And definitely a misplay on our part. But then we're going to be seeing in the standby phase, we're going to add back as well as then search. And just pass on. Oh, we're going to activate the effect of King Island, destroying the search here. Um, they're going to be activating the effect. Are they going to be scooping up there? You know, we did have also the Cobble of the Grave for the Moye, which is going to be very nice. You know, we have a Monster Negate. Um, but yeah, then we're going to be like showing off that we had we had the Kieran there. But we would have been dodging the effects of uh, Chi Zhao anyways. You know, the Imperm would have been very nice. But just kind of unfortunate that, you know, we ended up taking it there you know that's what like the thing with when you don't really keep up with the game sometimes or i guess that's also what i like about the budget series like i mentioned earlier a lot of the times like you can just end up playing like those weird stuff like they probably thought we were in some like titanic cloud or something like that to be able to like get a facilitated search later on or something that like actually would be useful but so i think an entis you know to you know pop the board um that's quite good as well as like this deck is a lot like rescuees whereas there's so many cards that do the exact same thing or get you to the same stuff like emergency or uh like the copy of Preventer, you know, if you just stop it or blow up the card, it doesn't activate before it activates, and you can like summon it back later with Preventer by banishing it, and like all sorts of good stuff that you can do. Um, whereas, like a lot of other decks, like for example, Sword Soul, you don't want someone mow you once. You know, if you if you can stop that effect, you're stopping a lot of the deck. Uh, if you can stop like a copy of a uh, Long Young, it's the same thing. Like you, if you're stopping the Extender. They have, like, obviously the tennies that are extenders, and then if you're playing the Super Heavy Samurai stuff, you have, like, those cards as well. Um, but there's only, like, certain key parts of the deck, which, yes, Fire King does have as well. You know, Fire King Island being an absolute crazy card. But if they start off with Fire King Island, and you're, like, negating it, uh, and they have a Sanctuary, like, later on in the turn, um, 
It's like, this is kind of huge. But we're moving on into game two here with Sword Slogan. We chose go, choosing who's going to go first once again. And we did see the ability of like, I, I should have played a little bit better. That would have let me able to OTK. Um, but unfortunately, we did not. Maximus being 15 is pretty nice as well. But like Circle facilitates OTKs so easily. We're going to see a Desire is going to be activating right off the top here. Banishing 10 cards to draw 2 cards. That's just making them start with 6 cards in the hand. And hopefully they banish their copies of Moe. We do see it looks like a Moe in the hand and a few Trap cards. We're going to see them normal summon with the Moe. Activating the effect, revealing an Emergence. Which is going to be quite good. Summoning out that token. Then we can activate the emergent, searching for a copy of Long Yon. Imagine if Desires had the same thing where you cannot like search turn it was activated. I wonder when they're gonna make make a pot card like that. Like prosperity would have been like so bad if it's like, oh yeah, you cannot activate any cards to search. Then we're gonna be seeing them go for a copy of Baron here, making us pay 12. We're gonna activate the effect of the nib. They're gonna chain the imperm, or we're gonna chain. The copy of Baron. We're going to chain Imperm to that. And then end up taking the board here. And like having that Imperm nib combo is absolutely crazy. But they do have an anti spell, it looks like, in their hand. So we're still going to have a bit of a problem. You know, having uh, Sanctuary as well as Fire King Island on the field is very crucial for us. Especially Fire King Island. Like, if we're not able to activate those spell cards, we're in trouble. They forgot to pitch off the long yarn there, so they're going to be pitching the Moye. They're going to set one with two cards left in hand. They're going to pass turn. They're on the draw phase. We're going to hit up the anti spell. That is quite good. We're going to double set some spell cards here. Probably shouldn't have done that, to be honest. But, uh. It is what it is. We're, like, we're going to be looking at a copy of Hita. Maybe we want to add something. Like, if we can find a way to pop um, that anti-spell with, like, a Kieran in the grave, that could be quite good for us. But we have to really find a way to do it, is the question. Oh, we wanted to know what the defense of the Runix was, because I thought maybe it was, like, 200. I know Kieran is 200, um, so maybe we could have searched it off of the Hita there. Because if, like, we destroyed the Hita and then summoned itself out... Or, yeah, we destroyed Hita... And then, but we can't even destroy Hita because it's in defense position. Do we just pass turn here? Okay. We're going to see them activate Long Young. Pitching the Vashuda to summon itself out. And we're going to take the 12 here. Going for a copy of the um, Cheng Ying. And they're going to be banishing the Vashuda to bounce back. Our field spell here, or they could just bounce back nib and just go for game. And then Cheng will be vanishing the two cards, and that's gonna be game right there. Moving on into game three. Anti spell is a problem. I, I don't even know. Like maybe we go for we probably should put the token in attack position. And then like if we have a normal summon, we can normal summon it, act for the effect, if it has an effect. Then go for Hita, Hita attack into it, then search for the Kirin. Kieran in main phase two. We have to have another fire on the field. Yeah, I don't really know if there's any possible way we can win this unless we have like multiple cards. But we're gonna be able to go first here, which is quite nice for us. And I'll be able to set up a few cards. If we can stop like a normal summon, I know we have like judgments in the deck. If we can stop a normal summon of a Moye, uh, that could be quite crucial for, for them. Like if the normal is not successful, you know, not having any effects. But they do have the tenies, which can, you know do quite a lot of stuff they can go into like the the synchros as well as i don't know if they're playing typhon but typhon is also quite good um in this deck you know just summoning out a single copy of a tenyi and then they activate the effect uh, or not activating the effect but just slapping on a copy of typhon on top of it um someone can clear like a bunch of those boards you know it does need you know have multiple cards in the back row but if we can like evenly match first 
and then slap it on. It, it can be quite good. But moving on into game three here. We're going to see Fire King going to be going first. Maybe I should just cut out some of the siding because like a lot of times if you're talking and stuff like that, it makes it so that there's like a little bit of space. Like right now, we haven't seen anything like really happen to him in like a minute now. We're going to see a Ponx being normal summoned that will let us search for a spell. Do we go for Sanctuary here? And we're going to chain Ash Blossom onto this. We're going to chain a Call of the Grave on the Ash. We do have it. That is two times that we end up having it. We saw the um, three times in this video, actually, that we have the Call of the Grave. We saw the Tyrant player open up Foolish twice. We have the Call of the Grave twice, which is quite, or three times, which is quite nice. Um, and then we're going to be going for the copy of this guy, you know, putting up the Sanctuary, putting this guy uh, island on the, for Fire Island on the field. Then we're going to act for the effect, popping the Ponix, you know, going for the copy of the Grunix, and then we're going to be destroying the Baron from the deck. You know, this is very the one card combo. And then. Do we just pass? We do just pass here. That is kind of crazy, to be honest. We're going to draw for turn. We always offer our opponent to cut, but we always search off the Baron afterwards. So, like, it's like super weird that we do that. We're going to add back the Ponks, and then we're going to search for a copy of Kieran, most likely. Unless we already have Kieran in the hand, which then we're going to be searching for a copy of Rangbali here. You know, for a spell and trap negate, especially, you know, maybe getting hit with an evenly match is going to be quite good. You know, they could always go before end of main. We can destroy. I already seen them attempt to go end of main here. We're going to then activate the Kieran, destroying the copy of Gronix, summoning itself out. And then Ring Bali will be able to trigger because a monster on the field was destroyed. Summoning itself out. And this will allow us to have a spell and trap negate. And then, obviously, if we destroy the Kieran, then we can then summon back out the copy of Garunix. And then Garunix can then send another copy of whatever. And we can also pop another card onto the field here. You know, it's not going to be that good against an evenly match in this case. Because we definitely don't want to pop um, additional card on the field. But we're going to see them activate the copy of Emergence. And what are we thinking here? We're going to negate with a copy of the Ring Bali, destroying the copy here of the Arvada, which can then trigger bringing back out, or yeah, trigger bringing back out the copy of Grunix, which can then destroy a card, or yeah, then destroy a card from the deck. I don't even know what we destroy here. We destroy probably a second copy of Baron, unless we sided it out, which can be quite plausible for like those Nibirus in a matchup like this. Yeah, I don't really know. We just probably someone out the uh, probably destroy Ponks, yeah. We don't really need to destroy anything. We just want to have like multiple cards in rotation. So we're destroying a Kieran here. Kieran will then reborn out the copy of Arvada. What? Then they're going to go evenly matched here. Then we're going to be keeping out the Arvada there. Oh, we're going to be summoning out the Arvada, popping the Garunix here, because Garunix hasn't activated its effects, so that when the Arvada dies, we can then activate the Garunix to summon himself out. The Garunix will be able to activate the effects, destroying the Ponks in the hand, and then the Garunix will be able to trigger himself to summon. 
That makes sense. So, you know, keeping a monster negate on the field is quite nice, which can then also trigger out the Garunix there. Man, I, I did these plays myself, and I don't even remember. Like, that's crazy. Now we're going to see a Vishuda summoning himself out here, which we definitely do not need to negate. Then we can go for a copy of Monk here. We could activate the Vishuda to attempt the bounce. We have to chain the Arvada to negate this. Destroying the Ponks, which then trigger out the effect of Garunix. And we're chaining the circle to this. You know, giving us an additional body on the field is quite nice. Unfortunately, we don't have another Baron, though. We can't destroy to search like a Kirin during our next standby phase. But we will have the Ponks to add back. That's like, what do they add here? They haven't normal summoned, though, which is kind of nice. But we're going to search for an Adhara. I kind of feel like you just search for a Taya here instead. Or a copy of Moye, but I guess it depends what last card in the hand is. And that character was already destroyed, so if it gets destroyed again this turn, it will not trigger. We have a long young here, so I guess it does make a difference. You know, you definitely don't want to be. I mean, no, if you, even if you normal summon reveal, activate the effect, you can just go for another copy of. Uh, and we don't even activate the Garui. What are we doing? We probably should have activated the effect. I guess they kind of have to get rid of the copy here of. I mean, we don't really need to summon out the Garunix there. We can just wait for they pop the Arvada. And if they don't pop the Arvada, then we essentially just go plus. Um, I feel like we should have just summoned it out, though, so that it does threaten the board. So we're going to pop, and then we just summon it out. And then... Yeah, there's like there's no real reason for us to wait that long to pop it. When we did destroy, we should have like destroyed the Ponks with the Arvada. We should have summoned itself out then, um, and then like if they had anything that we could have just destroyed it. Like then they have to like threaten by like oh do I get rid of the Grunus or do I get rid of the Arvada there? And like definitely a smart play is to get rid of the Arvada, but even then, unless we wanted to, like hope that they would negate it with Barone, but I guess that's probably not a good play. We're going to see them summon, special summon out the copy of Ecclesia here, and then we can search for the effects. Um, Ecclesia being a crazy special summon monster there. You know, it is not 2019 anymore. You know, it is three years later. But this card is still quite good, especially searching for a copy of, like, Maximus or a copy here of, like, Fleur de Lis. Which can then summon herself out and uh, negate the effects. And essentially it makes them like force to Barone negate it. And then we can normal summon with the Pox. Activating the effect freely here. Switching us for a Sky Island. Then we can activate putting the Fire King Island onto the field here. Or the Sanctuary. We always say searching for the Sky, Fire, Sky King Island. But it's actually the Sanctuary. And then we just go you know, destroy, destroy. We also have the Sky King Burn here as well, which we just activated, which can then summon itself out. Could we destroyed the Grunix, or we destroyed Grunix off Sky King Burn to pop the Barone. And then we go the effect of the island, pop the Ponix, search for a Kirin, and then we're going to be summoning them back up the Grunix, because it did see that something was destroyed. And then we're going to be destroying the Kirin off of the copy here of the Grunix. And then we can summon out the Arvada from the graveyard with the copy of the Kirin there. And then we're going to attack for 36, plus 15, plus 18 there. Which is, once again, a lot of damage, but not enough for game. There might be a world where we actually just destroy the copy of uh, of Arvada with the Kirin that we summon back out. And then Arvada can summon back out the Kirin. Because that would have been, I believe, enough for game. We have 27 plus 12, plus 15, plus 24. No, I would have left them at 200 there. 
Um, so I guess, you know, we would have left them at regardless. We would have left them at some life points regardless here. And keeping the Arvada on the field is quite good, especially when we destroy the Ponks to be able to add it back. Um, and then they're going to be summoning out the Monk. And they're going to be looking at, and they have still the effect of the, um, that Tenny in the hand, the Graveyard one. We're going to see if a shooter going to activate. We're going to be negating it with the copy here of the Arvada. Or, we're thinking that we're going to be destroying here. Yeah, we destroyed the Grunix there. And it's... Why do we bounce it back? Oh, because then we destroy it. Okay, it's, it was negated by Imperm. That makes sense. Negates by Imperm. We still have to put the effect bounce back. But then we can destroy a card. Um, and there when you're seeing the Tenyi's going to be doing their Tenyi stuff. And they end up scooping up here because time gets called and we have enough for game. You know, leave them only at like, I think it was like 600 life points there. They weren't going to do very much. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I want to see some more content like this. We're going to see you in the next one. Stay safe. Peace.